Good evening, good evening, good evening. And welcome to another Wednesday night Bible study. Yes. I am Pastor G. Rodney King, pastor of Mount Ararat Baptist Church here in North Las Vegas. And I'm here with my lovely wife, First Lady Janet King. And we greet you in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. I pray everyone is doing well. You're staying safe. You have gotten your vaccines as well as your boosters. Amen. Because this thing is still going around, people. I have talked to several people that have still, even though they've gotten their shots, they still have COVID. So the thing is, it doesn't stop you from getting the virus. It just protects you from getting really sick and even dying. Yeah. So I'm still advising everyone to get their vaccines as well as their boosters. You know, this variant that they have now is supposed to be even more deadlier than the original. So please, ma'am, please, sir, get your shots. Also, I know there are several people because of, you know, people being exposed and around other people. Several people are sick. They're coming down with stuff. I've been under attack myself, but thank God I'm doing better. Amen. Amen. Getting rid of all of this congestion and stuff that's inside of me. It's coming up and coming out. So all I'm saying is, Let's do what we need to do to protect ourselves, to stay safe, especially from COVID-19. Amen? Amen. We are still continuing our series of lessons on if Christ did not rise, what then? Mm -hmm. Now, just two days ago, we celebrated Christmas, supposedly the birth of Christ. Mm. Around the world, as a matter of fact, all over the world, they celebrated Christmas. December the 25th is a day set aside to celebrate his birth. Mm -hmm. But more importantly than his birth, and thank God he was born, whether it was December the 25th or not, thank God he was born. Amen, amen. But more important than the birth is the death. Yes. And the resurrection. Yes, yes, yes. I have to put both of them in there. Mm -hmm. The death because he died on the cross for our sins. His main goal, his main focus, his main purpose of coming to earth to be born was so that eventually he would die for our sins. Mm -hmm. And even though he died for our sins, it's more important that he got up, Amen. that he was resurrected, as he said he was going to do. Because there have been other prophets who have come, prophesied, people followed them, and they died. But the difference is they're still in their graves. Amen. If you go to Confucius, Muhammad, Aristotle, Plato, Socrates, all of those, those philosophers and prophets, you will still find their graves. But if you go where Jesus was buried, you will find an empty tomb. An empty tomb, hallelujah. And because of this war that's going on between Israel and Hamas, mm -hmm. they even had to cancel the Christmas celebration in Bethlehem, the city where Jesus was born, because of this war that's going on. Mm -hmm. So the usual celebrations they would have in Bethlehem over in Israel, they had to cancel because of this war. I said that to say, we need to pray about that. We need to continue to pray for that war that's going on in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Now, the Bible does tell us that there's going to be wars and rumors of wars, but that would just be the beginning of the birth pangs, mm -hmm. beginning of the things that's going to happen. It said it would be that, but it didn't say how long they had to last. Yeah. So we're praying, and I hope you're praying too, that these wars will come to an end. Yes. That there will be peace there, peace all over the world, because this is what Jesus came. Mm -hmm. He came as the Prince of Peace. Yes. Yes. And he came to demonstrate what God's love, grace, mercy, and truth was all about. So we need to continue to keep praying that there be peace over there in the Middle East yes, yes. and peace all around the world. Thank you, Lord. 
especially this time of year, they are still fighting. So we are continuing our series on if Christ did not rise, what then? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to rehearse, get your Bibles. And you know, this is Bible study. Get your Bibles because we're going to go to several different scriptures tonight. We left off in Matthew chapter 27. Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 27. And I'm going to rehearse what we covered, a little bit of what we covered last week to get everybody caught up. Mm -hmm. So last week, Matthew, let me say it one more time. Matthew chapter 27. First, let me put it on there. It's on the screen, so you should be able to see it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go back and start at, 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 at the 40th verse. Okay. We find that Jesus is now being crucified. He's up on the cross, and he's being crucified. And as he's being crucified, he's hanging up there on the cross between two thieves, two murderers and two robbers. So he's up there, and as he's up there, people are walking by, wagging their heads and pointing their fingers and saying, he said that he would destroy this temple and in three days raise, raise it up or build it back up again. Mm -hmm. So now, if he's truly the son of God, let him come down and save himself. Mm -hmm. He believes in God. Let God save him if he will. Mm. So basically what they're doing is that they're ridiculing, they're scorning, and they are really making fun of Jesus mm -hmm. while he's hanging up there on the cross dying for the sins of the world. Even the robbers are making fun of him. Yeah, we'll get to those two in a minute. Now the chief priests, okay, the elders and the scribes also join in mm. and start mocking him, saying he said he can sa he saved others. Let him come down and save himself, mm. since he is the king of the Jews. He's king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross. And if he comes down, then we'll believe in him. <laughs> really? Mm -mm, no, no, no. After all the things that he had already done, all the miracles he had performed, raising people, well, feeding people, healing people with all kinds of sicknesses and diseases, setting people free who were oppressed of demons, and raising Lazarus from the dead, the last and probably one of the greatest miracles. They didn't believe in him until up on all that. His coming down from the cross wasn't going to convince well, me. Nothing. Wasn't going to do a thing. They just full of it, yeah. One more miracle is that going to make them believe. It's just another way of ridiculing him. So that's what they said, though. He trusted in God. Let God deliver him if he will have him, since he's the son of God. And the two robbers, as Sister King said, but it really wasn't the two robbers. It was the one robber. Who said, come down and save us, save yourself and save us as well. Right. Because the other one got on him and says, Don't you fear God? You have the audacity to be criticizing this man when he's innocent. We deserve to be up here because we truly are guilty of our crimes. But this man has done nothing. And then he said, Lord, he acknowledged Jesus as being Lord. He said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Mm. So he was eventually convinced that Jesus was the Christ. And Jesus rewarded him by saying, today you will be with me in paradise. Yes, yes, hallelujah. Because you believe in me, you believe I am the Christ, I am the Messiah, I'm the promised one. Today, you will be with me in paradise. Yes, yes. You're going to be in my kingdom with me. Hallelujah. Woo, she, she shows you even at the last hour. Mm. 
if you confess the Lord Jesus Christ with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. The thief made it in. There have been some that says you have to be baptized to be a Christian, to be in the... No. That's a sign that you should show that you have been changed. Mm -hmm. It's an outward sign to publicly saying that you are a different person. Yeah. But it's not a requirement mm -hmm. for you to be saved, as the thief demonstrated. We should do it, don't get me wrong, because even Jesus was baptized. So we should follow his example and we should do it. If you have the opportunity, you should take advantage of it and get it done. So this thief was crucified along with Jesus, but he was going to be with Jesus in paradise. And then verse 45 says, from the sixth hour to the ninth hour, which is 12 o'clock noon till three o'clock in the afternoon, it says that there was darkness all over the land. Now, when it's talking about all over the land, it's talking about in Jerusalem, Judea, because we don't know about the rest of the world. As far as they can see. As far as they can see, there was darkness. The sun refused to shine. So, Nature re is responding now mm -hmm. to the creator, the king of glory, <laughs> being crucified. Mm -hmm. Even nature yes. is responding to it. Mm. So it was darkness all over the land. And then we find out that Jesus cried out with a loud voice about the ninth hour or three o'clock in the afternoon. He cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which is, we interpret, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And last week I said most of us have a misinterpretation of what that meant. We thought it meant, and you may still think that way, that he was talking to God about why God would abandon him and leave him in that condition. But as I told you last week, that was a quotation from Psalms 22 and 1. You find it in Psalms 20. David said this long before Jesus even came on the scene. Mm -hmm. But he was referring to Jesus when he made that statement, talking about what was going to happen in the future. Mm -hmm. What it really meant was, my God, whose hands have you left me into? These evil, wicked, vile, hard-hearted Jews, as well as the Romans, whose hands you've left me into. These evil, wicked men. Because Jesus was fully aware of when his hour came, why he was up there on the cross. It wasn't like it was a surprise to him. And if it wasn't a surprise to him, it certainly wasn't a surprise to God, who is omniscient. He knew he was going to die. As a matter of fact, we'll find in scripture, he asked God to prepare him a body so that he could go down and be sacrificed for the remission of sins. So it didn't come to some surprise. So however you might want to interpret this, he is not talking to God, but he's talking to the Jews. Because even in the Jews, in the eighth verse, they even had the audacity, let me find it too. In the eighth verse, he said, he said, he trusted in the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delights in him. You find that in that eighth verse of that 22, 22nd chapter of Psalms. Okay. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him since he delights in him. Throwing the words back on Jesus again. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus says, my God, my God, thus showing that he was the person whom the psalmist was referring to. Okay? So he said, look at who's these wicked Jews that you've left me in the hands of. These evil crucifiers, their wickedness, their hard-heartedness to refuse to believe that I am the Messiah. Mm. So however you might want to interpret it, Jesus was fully aware of why he was up there. Oh, yeah. So he wasn't saying, God, why'd you leave me up here, abandon me like this? He knew. Mm -hmm. 
that his hour had come and that he was up there for this to sacrifice himself to die on the cross. Mm -hmm. Now, and let me also add this to you, I, and I said this last week. The deity, and, and some have speculated and said, well, he his divinity separated from him and he was just dying as a human being. That is not also not true because it his, his, his deity, his divine nature had to be there to make the ultimate sacrifice. There had to be an atonement. Just being a simple man would not have done it. That means any man could have done it then. I was going to say anybody. Any man could have died on the cross. Mm -hmm. But no man was worthy to die on the cross because as the Bible says, we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. All of us. Every single one from Adam on, mm. except to Jesus is the only one. Mm. So he couldn't have just died up there as a human being. But this is probably what happened. Deity, however, might have restrained itself so much of his consolatory support as to leave the human nature fully sensible to all of the suffering. Mm. Now, that's a mystery to both of us. How could deity restrain itself? We don't know, but he did. So that as a human, he could feel the full brunt of his suffering. Deity could not console him, could not could be in a consolatory nature to let him feel the full effects of being suffering on that cross. Mm -hmm. That's why in the scripture says, we have not a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was like in us, in all ways tempted except without sin. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, you know the scripture, when Lazarus died, and Mary and Martha were crying, and he went to the tomb. The shortest verse in the Bible says, Jesus wept. Mm. And he wept because he was able to feel the emotions that those two sisters were feeling. Because he has feelings too. Remember, he, he got hungry. He had to eat. He had to drink water. He had to rest. So his human side, so his deity just restrained itself some so that he could feel the full brunt of his suffering. All right? So he was up there. His passion, this was necessary to make the suffering meritorious. It had to be. He had to die. He, his humanness suffered but it also, that sacrifice had to be divine as well. Okay? And it's proper that in all this is intended that our Lord's quotation from that 22nd Psalm, which was quoted by David long before he came. Before Jesus came. Before Jesus came, I'm sorry. So then while he's up there, those that passed by, when he said, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, thought that he was calling on Elijah. Because mm -hmm. you see, Elijah, it was supposed that Elijah would appear before the Messiah came. Mm -hmm. And because they were thinking that he was calling, they, they thought he's calling Elijah to come and save him. Looking for the Messiah is still to come, okay? But that's not what was happening. He was not saying that, but that's what they thought anyway. Anyway, so now we go to verse number 47. 48, I'm sorry. 48. Immediately, it says that someone out of compassion took a sponge, put it on a wreath, and tried to put it up to Jesus to uh, appease him to dead or to lighten his suffering, but he refused to take it, just like he had refused to take it before, I think, in around verse 34. Once he tasted that sour vinegar, he didn't want it because he wanted to feel the full effects of suffering, so he refused to take it. Mm. So now we're at verse 49, where we have <clears> thoughts. Mm -hmm. So now, while this person is doing this, trying to give Jesus this uh, 
grapes, excuse me, this the reed, this vinegar. The rest of them said this. Verse 49 is where we are. The rest said, leave him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come to save him. Don't give him no help. Don't put that reed up there. Uh -uh, leave, let him alone. Let him alone. Let's just see what's going to happen. Oh man, these people are some cruel people. They not they were actually partying at the at the crew. They were just partying and being nasty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were. Now, and I'm gonna have to explain this one. And then verse 50 says, and Jesus cried out again the second time with a loud voice, and look what it says, and yielded up. His spirit. Mm -hmm. Read that. And Jesus cried again with a loud voice and gave up his spirit. Now I'm going to, have to, I'm going to explain this. He dismissed his spirit. Mm. I noticed that. He didn't just breathe it out. He dismissed his spirit. Mm. He himself willingly gave up that life which was impossible for man to take away. Mm -hmm. He willingly gave up his life. Mm -hmm. It is not said that he hung on the cross till he died through pain and agony. Because he didn't. He didn't hang up there on that cross. Simply. Nor is it said that his bones were broken. Mm -hmm. Not a bone. Not a single bone was broken. It says in Psalms, not a single bro bone would be broken. No. Now, they would break the bones of those up on the cross so they couldn't push themselves up to get air. So now one of his bones were broken and he didn't stay up there dying out of agony and pain. No. To sooner put him out of his pain and to hasten his death. But that he himself dismissed the soul mm. that he might become not a forced sacrifice, but a free will offering for sin. Mm -hmm. It never was forced on him. He did this willingly. Now, in our English language, the word ghost, which we get from the Anglo-Saxon word gas, G-A-S-T, ghast. Mm -hmm. Okay, what does it mean? It means an inmate. It means an inhabitant. It means a guest, a casual visitant. All right, I'm going to say it again. The Anglo-Saxon word guest, G-A-S-T, means an inmate, an inhabitant, a guest, a casual visitant. Because you know what? He didn't come here to stay. Mm -hmm. In our use, it means his spirit. It means a spirit. Okay, it is now restricted among us to the latter meaning, his spirit. He gave up his spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay, or the soul of his man, the guest of his body, as having given up the spirit, the ghost, the soul, as an act not proper to man, though commended it to God, which Jesus was. Mm -hmm in our last moments is both an act of faith and piety. Mm. Mm. And as giving up the ghost, dismissing his spirit from his body is attributed to Jesus and Jesus only. Willingly, he did this. He the only one really can do it. Because he was born immaculate. Right, exactly. Nobody else had that kind of power. He was born immaculate means he did not have an earthly father. Amen. God used a earthly woman to inhabit that baby, but it was the Holy Spirit that put Jesus in her. Yes. You could say, if you want to, Mary was like a surrogate. Because he was immaculate. He was not born of an earthly father. Right. So he was not born in sin and shaped in iniquity like we were. All right? And he had never sinned. Had, he had not forfeited his life because of sin. 
and therefore may be considered as naturally and properly immoral. Yes. Immortal, I'm sorry. Immortal. Immortal. Mm -hmm. Im you know what immortal is? They can't die. Or they can't be killed. He gave up his life. He gave up his spirit. Nobody took it away from him. All right? No man, he says, taketh it, my life, from me, but I lay it down of myself. No man can take it. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up again. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. Hallelujah. Only God can say that. Mm. Only God. Therefore, do my father love me because I laid down my life that I might take it up again. Mm. I want you to turn to John. Let's go to John. We're going to go to John chapter chapter 10. Okay. We're going to go to John chapter 10. And we're going to start reading at the Seventeenth verse, John chapter ten, verse seventeen. It reads, "Therefore, my Father loves me, because I laid down my life that I might take it up again. No man takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down." And I have power to take it up again. This command I have received from my father. I've got the power to, to lay down my life. And I've got the power because he's given me this. You see that? Mm -hmm. Hence, we rightly translate Matthew, what we just got the reading, 27 and 50. He gave up the ghost. That is, he dismissed his spirit. Mm -hmm that he might die for the sins of the world. He knew why he came. Mm -hmm. Didn't nobody take his life? Even Judas betraying him. Huh. John says the same thing in, in John 19 and 30. He makes an impression of the same importance which we translate in the same way. And that, this is what John, you don't have to turn to it. John 19 and 30 says, he delivered up his spirit. Mm -hmm. Which he did. He delivered up his spirit. There is an equivalent expression. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. That is, I place my soul in thy hands, proving that the act was his own. Father, I'm giving you my spirit. I'm placing my spirit into your hands. Nobody's taking it from me. I'm giving it to you. You can't give somebody something that you don't have, that you don't own. He gave mm -hmm. his spirit back to God to keep it for three days. Let me read this. Go ahead. I'm still in John 19. Okay, read it. Since it was the day of preparation in order to prevent the bodies from hanging on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath was very solemn and important one to the Jews, the Jews requested Pilate to have the legs broken and body taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first one and of the other one who had been crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he had already go ahead and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Mm -hmm. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear. Are we going to go here? Yes, don't so don't go. Okay. Okay. So, what Sister King just got through reading was they broke the legs, as I said earlier, they broke the legs of the first man that was crucified with Jesus. Jesus was in the middle now between the two. He went past Jesus and went to the other one. Isn't that ironic? Mm -hmm. They it seemed like they would have did it in a row. First this one, then Jesus in the next round. But they went to the first one, skipped by Jesus, went to the second one, Broke his legs, but when they came back to Jesus, he was already dead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or he had already dismissed his spirit. I'm going to go back yeah. to that term again. Mm -hmm. 
So there was no need for them to break the legs. To break the legs. But they did something else. She already kind of alluded to it. One of the soldiers stuck him inside with a spear. I don't want to, because I'm going to go there a little bit later on. So I, I, I want to get this part about him dismissing his spirit. I want us to get that down in our head. Mm. So Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. I place my soul into thy hands, proving that it was his own and that no man could take his life away from him. No man could take it. And that he did not die by the falsehood, the lying, the deceitfulness of Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him, okay? Or of the malice of the Jews, who made up all of this. Stuff. We've already gone over, I'm not gonna go back, we've already gone over how they even broke their own laws and lied several, many times just to get him crucified, lied to Pilate about what he said, what he claimed, and all of this, all of that they went through, it wasn't because of that. That was all part of the plan. Yeah, it was written. That was all part of the plan. That was all part of God's plan to get him to the cross. Yes, yes. There had to be a way to get him to the cross, so they had to lie, just like Judas had to betray him. It was all part of the plan. So understand that. Thus he laid down his life for the sheep. That's you and I. That's the shepherd. And we're the sheep. That's you and I. Mm -hmm. The good shepherd. What does the Bible say? A shepherd will lay down his life for a sheep. Mm -hmm. A hireling will run away. Run. Yeah. When the wolf comes. Yeah. When the predatory animal comes, the hireling is going to get his heels to clicking. Yeah. Not going to stay there to protect the sheep, but yeah. the shepherd will lay down his life for his sheep. For a sheep. The good shepherd. The I good shepherd. It. Yes. No matter whether it's a wolf, a lion, a bear, whatever, he's going to stay there and fight. Even if it means his life, yes. he laid down his life for his sheep. Mm. Woo! Thank you, Lord. All right. Now, if you read in Acts, and we don't have, we're not going to go there. If you read in Acts 5 and 10, it talks about Ananias and Sapphira. Mm -hmm. And we kind of know what happened with them. They were supposed to be selling all of theirs to give to the disciples, to the apostles at the time, to use however they want to. And they lied. First, Ananias lied mm -hmm. and said he sold all and he gave it all to the church. And Peter said, why are you lying to the Holy Spirit? And he dropped dead right there. A few hours later, Sapphira came and said the same thing, and she dropped dead right there. But see, what they did was they breathed out their last. They expired. They died. There's a difference. Herod did the same thing. He breathed out. His, he expired. He did not willingly. They did not willingly give up their life. But in no case, either of the Septuagint in the Old Testament or any of the sacred writings in the New Testament is they dismiss their spirit. It's never said that. Mm. Or delivered up their spirit, spoken of of any person but Christ. Christ is the only one where it says that he dismissed his spirit. The rest of them breathed out their last. They expired. They died. Mm -hmm. Abraham, Isaac, Ishmael, Jacob, and others breathed out or expired, but none but Jesus Christ accepted, gave up the ghost, dismissed and delivered up his own spirit. Wow. wow. Only Jesus, because he was sinless, yes. and he had a right to do it. And he had the power to do it. He had the power. This is what we got to understand. It was the power. The same Holy Ghost that created this earth is the same one that he beheld. Because, see, again, we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And Romans 3 and 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, all except a woman. And because of that, his immortality, because of his sinless nature, 
He had the right to dismiss his spirit, yes. but he also had the right to take it up again because he had not forfeited his life. He bore our sins. He, ooh. he has borne our sins. He <laughs> borne our sins yes. upon himself. And carried our sorrows. Hallelujah. And by his stripes. Yes. That's what Isaiah 53 says. And by his stripes, we are healed. Whatever it is. Thank you, Father. Oh, good God Almighty. Yes. Whatever sickness or infirmity, by his stripes, because we are healed. Of because of no matter how long you've had it. Yes. You were healed. Yes, hallelujah. I can't keep referring to the man that was led by the pool for 40 long years and couldn't walk. Couldn't even get in the pool for somebody else did. When the waters was troubled by the spirit, somebody would beat him into it. But when Peter and them walked by, Ooh, in the God. name of Jesus, hallelujah. rise up and walk. The woman with the issue of blood for 12 long years has spent all that she had. Going to many different positions and was in no wise better, but got worse. But if I could just touch the hem of his garment. Yes, yes. After 12 long years, because he heard about Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm here to tell you, I don't know who I'm talking to. However long you've had your sickness or disease, it doesn't matter. If, if it's been 40 years, he can still heal you. You better believe it. Because Hebrews 13 and 8 says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And what he did back then, he can do the same thing for you. Today, right now, right now, right now, in the holy name of Jesus. If you just have the faith to in believe Jesus it. In Jesus' name, yes. Just touch him and his, he yeah, doesn't even have to touch you. You can touch him. No, he didn't say nothing to the woman. He said, just touch. He didn't touch her. He didn't say nothing to her. All she had enough faith to believe if I could just touch, not him, just his clothes. Hello? That's faith. The centurion who came to Jesus and said, Jesus, will you heal my servant? My servant's at home sick. Jesus said, I'll go with you to your house. No, no, no. You don't even got to come. <laughs> just say the word. Just say the word. You can stand right here. Just say the word. Your servant's healed. Jesus says, what? You got that kind of faith? I haven't seen that kind of faith in all of Israel. Yeah, come on. When the centurion went home, his servant was healed. He said, when did he get healed? He said he got healed a few hours ago. Ooh. That self-same hour. A lot of times Jesus was saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. Yes, yes. He told the woman with the issue of blood, daughter, go in peace. Your yes. faith yes. has made you whole. Mm -hmm. And Sister King said, by his stripes, we are healed. Hallelujah. He died for us. Yes. Hallelujah. He made the sacrifice for us. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. He didn't die for himself, he died for us. And <laughs> uh, yeah, us. Uh, yes. And not only that, past, present, and even those who haven't even been born yet. Yes, yes. Mm. Even the little babies. For the few, yeah, the next few The next years. generation. Yes. On and on. Oh, God. Perpetual. Yes. I, I told you oh, that the nature even responded mm -hmm. to his death because the sun refused to shine. But look what verse 51 says. We're in verse 51 now. Yes, yes. I, I had to explain that when he cried out with a loud voice. What happened? Because he didn't die from pain and agony and it wasn't being crucified. They didn't take his life. He gave it up. He gave it. He gave it up. Just like the scripture says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And the son did the same thing. He gave his life for yes, us. Yes. That's power. That's power. As Sister King said earlier, he had power. That's power. That he laid it down. He laid it down in power to take it back up again. Yeah. We we can't fathom. We really can't fathom that kind of power. No. 
No. We can't even fathom how he can heal all those people that all had all those sicknesses and diseases just by laying hands on them. Some he laid hands on, some he spoke to, some he just said, go. What did he tell the 10 lepers? He didn't say, he didn't say, you know, be cleared of your lepers. He said, go show yourself to the priests. Yeah. And the Bible says, as they went, they were healed. They were healed. Mm -hmm. That's all he said was, go show yourself to the priest. He didn't say, be healed of your leprosy. Just go show yourself to the priest. And as they started to walk away, they were healed. Because they did what Jesus told them to do. And they believed what he said. And only one came back to show his gratitude. Yeah, but they were still all healed. They were still all healed. He didn't take it back because the other nine didn't come back. That's us. We would have done <coughs> <clears throat> mm. Verse 51 says, Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn from the top to the bottom, mm -hmm. and the earth quaked, and the rocks were split. Yes. Mm -hmm. The veil of the temple. The veil of the temple. Holy. That is the veil which separates the holy place. Yes, yeah, the holy of holy. Where the priests ministered from the Holy of Holies into which the high priest only entered. Mm -hmm. Only the high priest could go into the Holy of Holies. And guess what? He could only do it or he only did it once a year to make general atonement for the sins of the people. Yes. You know, I was trying to look up the size of that veil. Oh, it was large. Yeah, it, it, I mean, and not just, it was thick. You know, it, it, it wasn't nothing some man could just come tear. I mean, it was thick. It was really thick. I, I mean, it had to be torn supernaturally. But look what it says. You know, most of the time, if you're going to tear something, you'll tear something from the bottom to the top. This says it was torn from the top to the bottom, mm -hmm. which means no man can get up to the, to the top and tie it. Supernatural. Yeah, yeah. Su torn from the top to the bottom. The veil of the separated the holies from holies. Yes. It was 30 feet long by 30 feet wide and perhaps four inches thick. Can you imagine? You don't even see, I mean, that's a, like a wall, you know. 30 feet. 30 by 30. 30 in height, 30 in width. Now let me let me kind of give you an head. example of what 30 feet is. Mm. If anybody ever seen a basketball game. The basket is 10 feet high. Oh. The basket is 10 feet high. So these guys who are dunking got to be able to jump up 10 feet. So imagine three times that. No man could have done that. that. That's how tall it was. Yeah. We, we've seen those movies. Uh, Art, the, the, King Kong. Oh, oh King Kong. <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm gonna just give you something to give you some reference. No, they said King Kong was 25 feet tall. So it was the veil of the temple was taller than King Kong, and as as well as wide it was, as it was high. Yes, 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 yes. And she said, "What four feet? Four, four inches thick. Four inches. So you think a veil about, about like this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe. So it had to be done supernaturally." <laughs> Torn from the top of the bottom when he was hanging up there on the cross. Mm -hmm. The veil was torn, and then the earth quaked, and the rock split in half. Again, nature responding to yes. the creator dying. Yes, yes. The earth. Oh, 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 oh. let me go and get some more of this. Mm. I'm just, can I say something? Yes, I'm go just ahead. thinking, we sing all our Christmas songs, and we sing it. Uh, let heaven and nature sing. Well, heaven and nature is going to sing when it's time to rejoice and it's going to cry and do what it has to do when it's time to, to do that. And this was a time of solemn uh, 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 pity because of what was happening with Jesus. It was, it was terrible. And so nature was responding. It's, it responds to whatever the spirit 
is doing. It was responding to its creator. Yeah, to its creator. Exactly. It was responding to its creator. Yes, 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 yes. You know, there's a place where it says, if we stop, even the rocks will cry out. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, yeah. I, I, I got to tell you this little the story that's in the Bible. We, you talk about when Balaam was on his way to do something to the Jews, he was riding that donkey. Mm -hmm. And God sent an angel with a sword that was going to stop him from getting there. And he was going down the road and he didn't see the angel with the sword. But supernaturally, somehow, the donkey saw it. And when they tried to go forward, the donkey saw that angel with that sword, and he crashed into the, to a wall. I ain't, going, yeah. I ain't going no further. And Ben slapped him upside the head, and he's like, what's wrong with you? Get on up here, you mm -hmm. know. And he kept trying to go, and the donkey crashed into the wall again. <laughs> And he was like, what's wrong with you? Slapped him upside the head again. Finally, God gave the donkey the ability to speak. He said, don't you see that angel in front of us with that sword? Mm -hmm. Now, even the donkey saw it. And then God, he opened up his eyes and he yeah. saw it. Yeah. But the donkey saw it first. Yeah. So he let the donkey, you know, you say animals don't speak, but that donkey spoke. Hello. Because he's about to get killed and, and bail him he's too. Like, I ain't going down there. I ain't going no further. You can hit me upside the head all you want to. I'd rather get hit and cut up with that sword. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you ain't going to turn me into no donkey meat. Mm -mm. <laughs> Do you see that? <clears throat> Nature responded. Yes. The earthquake and the rock split in half. Yes. Now, we ain't talking about little pebbles. Mm -mm. We're talking about big boulders. Split in half. Okay? What is this? This is all emblematic and pointed out. The separation between the Jews and the Gentiles was now abolished when that veil was torn in two. Mm -hmm. That that separated the Jews. Because remember, the, Jew, the Gentiles could not even go to the temple and be in the temple. They couldn't offer any sacrifices to, to the priest for them. They weren't even allowed. But now that this veil is torn in two, it had separated. It had, the, the, the separation between the Jews and Gentiles were now abolished. Yes, yes. And now communicated to all mankind. Yes. Now, I ain't trying to offend nobody, but you ain't got to go to no priest. Mm -mm. You ain't got to go to no priest for no priest to pray for you. You have access to the throne of grace all your own. All day long. And I ain't got to go kiss nobody's ring. All night long. I ain't got to kiss nobody's ring and say, because he ain't God. He is not Jesus Christ. So I'm sorry, but the Pope is not Jesus Christ. No, and he may. Mm -hmm. And I ain't got to go kiss his ring for him to pray for me, because he probably don't even know who I am. I can go to Jesus for myself. Yes. And I tell my congregation, and I'm telling y'all all the time, you ain't got to wait for me to pray for you. You have access to the throne of grace your own. I'm just another man. God just set me apart to declare his word, but I am no better and no powerful than you, any one of you all. Amen. You can go to God for your own. You're going to wait till you get sick or whatever and 12, 1 o'clock in the morning, you gonna call me? Don't you do it. <laughs> you better go and go pray for yourself. I know Sister King might be snoring. What if I'm on vacation? You gonna wait till I come back and ask me to pray for you? You better learn how to pray for yourself. The veil has been torn in half. You don't need a man to pray for you, or a particular man. And the high priest is not the only one who can go into it now. It's been abolished. Yes. All can go. Yes. Okay? Hallelujah. And the privilege of the high priest Hallelujah. has now been communicated to all men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All men. If you have right standing with Jesus. Mm -hmm. If you have a right relationship with God. 
Now, if you're still a sinner, you can't go. If you don't believe, yeah. It, well, that's what I mean. That's what makes you a sinner if you yes. don't believe. Exactly. I just want to clarify what that meant. You got you have to have, to have faith. You got to believe that Jesus Christ died for your sin. You have to have righteousness, which means you have to have right standing and a right relationship with God. Because mm -hmm. he's not going to hear a sinner's prayer mm -hmm. until you could repent yeah. and, and, and accept Jesus in the pardon of your sins. Mm -hmm. Just like the thief, even if it's at the last minute. Then you could go to him and ask him for something. Anything. Anything. Yeah. Don't make no difference what the problem. I can go to God in prayer. Because the Bible says that just like he said, he says, therefore I say to you, whatsoever things you desire when you pray. You notice it says when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. When you pray, don't say when the preacher prays or the priest prays, when you pray. And 1 John 5, 14 and 15 says, this is the confidence. That we have. That's a plural word. We, not me, we have in him. Amen. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Yes. And since we know that he, I, I don't use the word if, but and since we know we that he hears us, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. Yes. Whatever that may be. Whatever it is. If you have faith to believe. Hallelujah. So you don't have to wait till the high priest. Okay? All my henceforth have access to the throne of grace yes, through you. the one great atonement and mediator, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because now we've accepted him in the pardon of us. We've been adopted into the family. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And grafted. And grafted. Part of the royal priesthood. And the Bible says that we are now heirs <laughs> and joint heirs mm -hmm. with Jesus Christ. Yes, 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 yes. And whatever Jesus has, we have. We have. Yes, indeed. Mm. And whatever he has. And he said, wait, 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 wait. It gets even better. Because he said we can use his name. Yes. Invoke it. Woo! Mm -hmm. So when you pray in the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. you're saying something. That's why we shouldn't say that name in vain. That's why we shouldn't just use it haphazardly. That's why we shouldn't do like the boy who cried wolf. And when he really needed the help, nobody believed him because he kept crying wolf so much. So don't use the name unless you really need to use the name and really mean it when you use the name. And don't use his name in vain. Good God Almighty. Yes. I hear people saying, God. You know the rest. And oh, Jesus, I mean, just loosely. Mm -hmm. When I say that name, I want God to hear me. Because I ain't playing when I use that name. I, ain't, I, take, I don't take it lightly. Let me go on. Verse 42, show you some more of what's happening. Not only did the, tip, the, the curtain tear, yeah, not only did the curtain tear and the rocks and the rock split and the earthquake, he said, and the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. Now I gotta explain this one. Because that's deep. This is deep. Okay. They I, I gotta explain. Let me read mine. Go ahead, read. The it. tombs were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep in death were raised to life. And let me let, let me put 53 with it because I'm gonna explain all three of those together. Okay. And coming out of the grave after his resurrections, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. So now let me say this. This is what happened. Mm, come on. There was a great earthquake. Okay? There was a great earthquake, like the earthquake when the angel descended from heaven. But there was a great earthquake because the creator was dying. Yeah. Okay? And they had rid of so by the earthquake, by this earthquake mm -hmm. that happened, all of these many graves of the saints which had slept, which is a, just another word, a common expression for death in the scriptures, who had fallen asleep in the Lord, these graves were opened up at the earthquake. Let me say that one at a time. The earthquake happened, it opened up the graves, but nothing yet happened yet. Then it says, 
and came out of the graves after the resurrection. Mm. Notice mm. that. Not before, but after. Some thought that when the earthquake happened, it opened up the graves and they came out. No, 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 no. When Jesus was dying, the earthquake happened, the graves opened up, but nothing happened because it still had to be three more days. Okay? So three days still had to pass by. So the, all those who slept did not come out when the earthquake opened up the graves. It was after the three days and he was resurrected. Mm. Okay. Let's get that straight. That's why you got to go in and, and read the scripture and research because a lot of people think when the earthquake happened, the graves opened up and the, so those people came out. No. That's I not. always thought that. Uh, I always thought that. No, that's not what happened. Okay. Why? Because Jesus had to be the first fruits of them that right. Okay, let me let me prove this. Uh, go to uh, First Corinthians. Let's go to First Corinthians, and we're going to go to chapter fifteen. First Corinthians, chapter fifteen. Okay, here we go. Let's start reading at the 12th verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we're going to start reading at the 12th verse. Now, if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? Mm. And I'm going to go back to this again later on. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. What is our whole subject about? Christ if Christ did not rise, what then? What then? Huh. Here it is, right here. Right here in 1 Corinthians. I wanted to say this, but for some reason, the Holy Spirit is leading me to say it now. If Christ did not rise, whew, and if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. Because that's what we preach. Our whole message is about Jesus dying and rising from the dead. Yes, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he did not raise up. Hmm. If, in fact, the dead do not rise. Hmm. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. Well, we get into the nitty gritty. And if Christ is not risen, our faith is futile, and you're, you are still in your sins. Because that's what makes the difference. Yes. It's not just dying, it's God. He got up. Yeah. Yeah. Then also, those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope, we of all men most miserable. So they didn't come out because he had to be the first fruits of them that slept. Yeah. The graves were opened at his death by the earthquake. That's when they were opened. The graves were opened. And the bodies came out at his resurrection. resurrection. Yes. I think I did know that. Yes. 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 Okay, so there's two different things that happened. As his dying was occurring, the earthquake was so violent that it opened up the graves. But it just opened up the graves. Nothing happened until three days later. When he rose, now Thank you, Lord. Then they rose. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. And as evidence, as proof, appeared unto many. That means that somebody recognized these people who had been dead. Oh, yeah. They recognized. Wait a minute. Isn't that James? Didn't he? I'm sorry, anybody named James. <laughs> I'm just calling out a name. Wait a minute. He died two years ago. He died 10 years ago. He died whenever. He died with my grandmother. You know, what is he doing walking around? Hello. 
thus establishing the truth of our Lord's resurrection in particular and of the resurrection of the body in general by many witnesses. Mm -hmm. That is so deep. So the earthquake opened up the graves when Jesus died, mm -hmm. but it wasn't until he right. resurrected that they came out mm -hmm. and was evidence. And the question is always asked, did these people live again forever? Or did they go back to the grave when he ascended? I mean, there's so many questions around it, but look how deep that is. That, that, that is so deep. Let me answer that question. Because we can just look at Lazarus. Lazarus was not resurrected. He was resuscitated. Mm -hmm. But Lazarus died again. Yes. He didn't live forever. After Jesus he was resurrected by Jesus because he wasn't, excuse me, resuscitated. He died again. These people died again. Mm -hmm. okay. Anyway, the bottom line is they didn't come out until he rose, rose himself because right. he had to be the first one. No doubt about that. But and you know what? My so time deep. is up for tonight. So deep. Yes. Yes. But the whole thing is, and I, I kind of jumped ahead to this first Corinthians, but I'm going to go back there again. I, I got to do, because that's the caption of this. Because mm -hmm. we're talking about if Christ did not rise, what then? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go back to that first Corinthians because show you that's important. Yeah. Okay. So Sister Diane, her niece is in the hospital and she's receiving her second round of chemo and she just asked us to pray for her and the family. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's Diane Nicholson. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Okay. Bless you, Father. Father, we come to you at the end of this Bible study. Bless you, Father. Hallelujah. We're talking about our Lord and Savior. Our whole title is about if Christ did not rise, what then? Bless your name, Father. And we're establishing, first of all, that he had to be born. He had to come. Yes. He had to go through all he went through. He had to suffer. He had to go through all the trials and tribulations, yes. and he had to die on the Bless cross. You. Bless you, Jesus. But that was just the beginning. Mm. Mm -mm. But we thank you for the sacrifice that you made because you came to die on the cross for our sins, for the remission of our sins, that we could be reconciled back to the Father. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank you for the sacrifice we made. Lord, we just give you the praise, honor, and the glory because it, it's all about you. It's all about Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's not about us. Yes, thank you, Father. And we just thank you, Father, that you loved us so much that you sent your only begotten Son mm -hmm. into this sin-sick world to die on the cross. You, I ask right now that you would forgive us of any sins we may have Father, committed yeah. in thought, in word, or in deed. Right now, I pray for those who don't know you in the pardon of their sins, yes, Lord, that they would come to a saving knowledge of the Lord yes, Jesus Christ Father, yes. and accept him in the pardon of their sins before it's everlasting too late. Oh, Lord, I pray right now. Yes, Lord Jesus. What the world needs now is Jesus. Yeah. What the world needs now is Jesus. More than ever, we need him now more than ever. With all of this violence, with all of this shooting, with all of these wars, with all of this bad feelings we have towards one another, the hatred, the prejudice, the animosity, all the division that's on in our land, not just here in the United States, but even over there in Europe. Yes. We need you. In our churches, yes, Lord, Father, even in our churches. Bless your name, Father. Lord, there have been a few prayer requests. Thank I lift you, up Jesus. Sister Diane Nicholson's niece yes, Lord, that's going through chemo, that's going right through now. Her, her battle with her disease. Bless I'm Lord. praying, Father, for her right faith now. to increase to believe right that the now. Lord Jesus Christ the can name. heal her right now in, in the name in the of name. Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, oh Lord, I'm praying for her. I'm praying for anybody else who may be going through it in sickness or infirmity. Anybody who's going through mental health issues, which is really demonic forces working on their minds. I pray for them in the name of Jesus. I pray that Satan take your hands off of them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus against you. And I command you to take your hands off of them in the name of Jesus. Right now, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, I just thank you Every this name this that evening. is represented, Lord. Thank we you. give you praise. We yes, give you Lord. honor. We give you glory. Yes, Jesus. Every in the name of Jesus. Jesus. I pray that you continue Jesus to bless. Name. As we bless get ready you, to go into this new year, you, this brand new Bless-ish. year, 
We thank you for Christmas. We thank you that we're able to be with family and friends, exchange gifts, and do all those things. But we realize that Jesus really is the reason for the season. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So as we get ready to go into this brand new year, we pray that we can go into this brand new year with a different mindset. With a mind made up to stay in on thee. And let this same mind be in us that was also in Christ Jesus. Bless your name, Father. Oh, we just thank you, Father. Bless you, Father. We just thank you. We look forward to a blessed new year. Hallelujah. So we thank, thank you, you and give you the praise, honor, yes. and glory. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty in name, Jesus we pray. Name. Thank God and thank amen. You, amen. Amen. I pray that everybody's being blessed. We still have a little bit more to cover yeah. about this, but you can see where we're going with this. Yeah. Amen. I just pray it's a blessing. Amen. And I, let me say this. I thank all those who have contributed through our Givelify, who have seeded into our ministry who we see it and we thank you right now. I'm telling you, I publicly thank you. Yes, Lord. And I pray that you would continue as the Holy Spirit moves on you yes, to contribute to our ministry. We are a growing ministry. Yes. And those of you who have, you know who you are, so you know who I'm talking about. And those who are kind of teeter tiring on the fence, I tell you that the anything you give is going to the ministry. Yes. It's not going in my pocket. God is blessing me. Don't need it. The yeah. church need it. God is blessing me. Yes. Okay. So it's going to the ministry and to the church. We're yes. trying to grow. Hallelujah. We're trying to build the new edifice. Yes. And we need it desperately. We need it bad. Yes. yes. Let me change that. We're going to be. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So I thank you for contributing. I pray that you continue to have a blessed night. Blessed rest of your week. Have a happy. No. Yes. Have a blessed and happy and joyous new year. And remember, we love you, but God loves you so much more. Good night. Good night.